Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Of course, this is Pablo from DMAR Shoe Repair. And today's shoe repair project is going to be a pair of Allen Edmonds dress shoes. This is a cap toe Byron model, 360 degree Goodyear welt. Uh, these have been repaired before. Um, someone installed some leather toe pieces. So pretty much we're going to just take them apart, um, remove the welts, re-welt them, uh, put on some JR graffiti soles. Uh, this sole is of course by the world famous tannery JR in Germany. Uh, but this is a special edition of their leather sole, so it has uh, what's called a graffiti print on them. So this is a pretty cool, unique sole, so I'm going to use those. Um, and the reason we're going to re-welt these is because uh, the welt's a little bit chewed up from this added toe piece. Uh, so I think it's just best to start from scratch and rebuild these to better the new condition. So let's get this project started. Get this shot we're going to remove the sole the heel block, and the welts. All right, so I've deconstructed the old materials, uh, the sole, the cork, uh, the welt, and I did notice that the gemming is quite mangled. It's all chewed up, especially in the heel area. So I do have to change the gemming, and I will be using a uh, new gemming uh, to glue on. And the purpose of the gemming is to uh, secure the footbed uh, to the shoe itself, the upper. So this uh, canvas ribbon is glued to the footbed and then stitched to the uppers and the welt. So it's a very important part of the um, construction. So we do have to change that because this is no good. All right, so we are installing our new welt. This is a dark brown uh, welt, which matches the original. And unfortunately, we don't have Goodyear welt machine. So instead of 10 seconds, it takes cobblers 20, 30, 40 minutes per welt to hand sew, but that's all right. It just shows how much we love our job. 
so with a nice heavy duty wax thread, we will hand sew this welt. And the needle I'm using is called a jerk needle. I don't know where that name came from, because this needle is certainly not a jerk. It's been very good to me. So yeah, this is about a 25, 30 minute process per shoe. So we'll see you when I'm done. Cool guys, so we uh, have the shoe re-welted. Uh, this is our new leather welt. And the next step is going to be to put our cork filler uh, onto the footbed and fill that little cavity. So we will go ahead and glue that in. So we have the uh, new cork uh, filler put in, and now we're ready to glue on our JR Graffiti Leather Soles.
All right, so we have our JR soles now stitched to the welt. And all that's left now is we have to attach our heel bases, our top lifts, um, finish the edges, clean condition polish the uppers, and we're all done for this project. If you guys noticed, um, there was no shank in the shoe. That is because Allen Edmonds, um, their heel bases come with a little built-in arch support. So that takes the role of a shank. And that's why I'm going to reuse the same heel base because there's no shank in here and uh, this customer needs the arch support. So let's go ahead and install the heel bases and the top lifts and continue this job. Alright guys, uh, this heel base has now been glued to the sole. This is a 360 degree Goodyear welt, so <clears throat> in some cases the heel bases are secured to the shoe through the footbed, but in this case the sole is secured uh, in the heel area by the welt. So this ain't going anywhere, so all we have to do is with a threaded nail, uh, nail the heel base to the leather sole. So. This is the exact same way that Allen Edmonds installs their heel bases and now the nails are just going to be clinched to the leather sole which is secured all the way around. Let that glue dry and then we'll glue on our new heel lift and we're almost done this project. All right, so all we have left now is uh, to restore the uppers. And this is a smooth leather, so I'm gonna use smooth leather products. So we'll start off with the Saphir Cleaning Lotion for smooth leather. I like to apply this with my uh, spatula brush from Saphir. It's a firm bristle, so for cleaning it really uh, scrubs well, lifts a lot of dirt out. And a good thing about this cleaning lotion is that 
not only is it clean, it also starts to hydrate and moisturize leather. So when we apply our conditioners, it'll really uh, allow the conditioner to absorb and feed deep into the leather pores. This will also help strip off any old waxes that are on the shoe. got the cleaning lotion buffed off and I can already see a little bit more depth of color coming through um, we remove the old waxes and build up so now this next product is the Saphir Renovateur which is a cleaner but mostly a conditioner so it's going to really luster and hydrate the leather make it soft and supple so when we apply our pigmented polishes they'll really absorb and uh, penetrate the leather like we want it to. And I did clean up this brush before using this product. that dry and absorb for five minutes and then we'll come back and give it a buff. All right we have our cleaning and our conditioning done now it's time to feed some pigments this is the Saphir Creme Sur Fine Cream Polish, color number 10, I believe. Yep, Cognac. Very close match to the leather on the shoe. And we'll just rub that in. Let that dry for five minutes and buff it up. Now the last step that I do in my polishing routine is applying a uh, wax paste polish. This is the Saphir Pat Deluxe in light brown. And this is gonna just add that extra layer of glaze uh, and shine. And I do get asked a lot from my customers, um, you know, the difference between polishing and waterproofing and what do I have to do? My personal advice is if you condition and polish your shoes regularly, you don't need a waterproof specific product because the waxes from your conditioner and polishes are gonna seal the leather pores and add a layer of water repellency and this uh, polish I'm using now uh, to me is a very good waterproofer or water repellent uh, in itself so if you condition and polish regularly I don't think you really need to have a waterproof specific product unless you're doing some crazy hiking or in a very snowy area where there's salt and, and slush let that dry five minutes and do our final buff. All 
All right, so we got this leather looking pretty beautiful now. Um, cleaned it up, gave it a good conditioning, um, cream polish, and then wax polish. Um, obviously, to clean your shoes regularly is a good idea. Get dirt and build up of waxes off the leather, and then start to feed it with nutrients that uh, will keep the leather soft, supple, and performing long term. Um, when leather gets dry, it can crack, and when it cracks, it can rip, and then your investment is down the drain. So proper shoe care is very important for the longevity of your footwear. So this project is pretty much done. I am just going to lace these babies up, show you how they turned out, and then finish it off with some pictures of the before and after. All right, new JR Graffiti Soles, outsole stitch with a channel in the sole, uh, Vibram heel caps, new leather welts, and a deep clean condition and polish to the uppers. Awesome guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, it was so much fun to recraft this pair of Allen Edmonds. Don't forget to Hulk smash the like and subscribe buttons. And we will see you next time on our next project. Thanks, guys.